Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Mary Morgan. I um, will be giving the presentation today, and we'll be talking about impact grants. Um, the title of today's presentation is Impact Grants, Turning Ideas into Action. Um, and the reason we chose that is every great impact grant starts with a good idea. Um, and after that, you start to put your plan into action, and that's what we'll be focusing on today, how to take that idea and turn it into an impact grant project. Um, impact grant applications are online right now, um, so anybody can go in and view them and get started. They are due by September 4th at noon Central Time, so you have quite a bit of time to get that application in. Please be aware that that deadline is very strict. Um, so we can't make any exceptions for that. Impact grants are competitive, so make sure that you start your application early. And if you're attending today, you're doing just that. We'll start with a little information about webinars in general. Um, some information here, if you get disconnected, please click on the email link. If you have any issues along the way, please call us. We'll help you get right back in and get started. So the basics of impact grants. Impact grants are the biggest grants that the Elks National Foundation offers. Um, they are between $2,500 and $10,000, and they can be used for large-scale Elks-led service projects. Your project should focus on serving community members in need um, and with a strong local focus. So we receive applications from all over the country, um, small towns, big cities, you know, rural areas, everything in between. So make sure that you tell us about your community when you're filling out the application. You know your community best, and so tell us, you know, you've done the research and this is what you want to focus on. Um, Elk's involvement in an impact grant is absolutely essential. If your project doesn't have Elk's involvement, it will not get approved. It's that simple. Um, as I mentioned, applications are online now, and impact grants are competitive. So Unlike our other applications, if you submit an application and we have questions, we can give you a call, send an email, you know, get it figured out. Unfortunately, with impact grants, as soon as it's submitted, it is final. So that's why we encourage you to call us and talk to us and ask any questions, and we'll help you along the way. So um, here is a flow chart to kind of visualize what we're talking about today. So you start with a big picture issue. So what is one thing that your lodge wants to focus on? You know, who does the lodge want to help? So maybe your lodge wants to help youth. So you'd start there and then you'd think about your community, your community need. What do youth in your community need? Um, and then when you find out what the needs are for youth in your community, what are you going to address specifically and how are you going to address that? So the project is the end result of this brainstorm, this issue, this idea, and then a plan put into action. So a great example of this would be childhood obesity. So childhood obesity is a big issue in the United States. So maybe that's something that your lodge is passionate about and that's what you want to focus on. So when you boil that down to maybe a local community need, and perhaps in your community that issue is healthy food. Maybe access to healthy food isn't that easy for people in your community, either because of location, because of price, you know, for a lot of different reasons. So then you can say, okay, how do we go about providing healthy food options for children? And then you brainstorm potential projects. So community garden, a healthy living program, fresh produce. So that's a great way to take that big picture issue and funnel it down to your project. Um, another example might be homeless veterans. So a lot of veterans in this community um, have issues with, in this country, have issues with homelessness. So you think about, uh, and boil that down to a local community need. You know, maybe the veterans in your community need food, clothing, and some help with shelter. So when you think about potential projects, maybe your lodge wants to volunteer at a veteran stand down and then hold support events the rest of the year. Or maybe you want to open a supply closet in partnership with the VA where veterans in need can come in and pick up food or clothing or anything else they might need. 
So if we're starting at the top, you want to pinpoint that big picture issue. Um, and you can start this by researching local issues. Um, and we encourage you to cast a wide net, start big, um, and ask everybody that you know in your community if they have ideas. So think about what population you want to serve, consider your largest strengths, um, take all those things into consideration when you're thinking about a big picture issue. Um, and we have a quote there at the bottom um, from Penny Best in Princeton, Illinois, who is one of the project managers for her Lodges Impact Grant project. And she's talking about the, how her project got started. So they were going to use their gratitude grant for a youth awards banquet, which they'd done for years and years, long before the grant program started. But then she was listening to the radio and heard a commercial that hunger was a big problem for youth in their community. So that year, Penny and her lodge got together and said, let's use the gratitude grant to provide meals for kids in need. And it was very successful. And it turned out that that small gratitude grant turned into their whole impact grant project. So now every week, Princeton, Illinois provides a meal to people in the community in need. So getting started, um, to find those ideas and research local issues, um, talk about the project at meetings, around the lodge, ask members what they think, if they have any suggestions. Uh, make sure when you're doing that, you consider all possibilities for elk involvement. Um, as I mentioned, involvement is a huge part of what makes a good impact grant project. Um, be sure to reach out to local groups in your community. You know, if there's other fraternal groups, maybe a women's club, a gardening club, you know, maybe there's a VA office in your community or a senior center or, you know, a Head Start group for kids in need, you know, make sure that you speak to everyone. Um, and one of the reasons we suggest that is, you know, you don't want to start your project from scratch. If someone in the community is already running a great program for homeless vets by providing them with food you know you don't want to duplicate that but they would be a great contact to start thinking about how your lodge could help them expand that project or finding other needs that you know those veterans might have so great example is on the right side of this slide we have hilo hawaii um, so they started asking around in their community and they were in touch with a local health center who already had a program for community members with diabetes. Um, and it was an intervention program. It was talks about healthy living, how to change your lifestyle and everything like that. So they already had this program, but what the health center realized that after they had this program for people teaching them how to live healthy, um, the participants had problems getting access to healthy food. Um, in Hawaii, it can be very expensive to buy fresh produce. So the elk said, hey, we have a great idea. We'll partner up with you. And after everybody completes this training program, we'll go to their house, we'll build garden beds, we'll help them plant their garden, we'll give them lessons on how to build their, how to grow their own produce in their own backyard. And it's had fantastic results because everybody who learned about all this healthy living and how they needed to intake more fruits and vegetables can now just walk right out into their backyard and do so. And that's all because the Elks were just researching their community and asked this health center if they had any thoughts. So another suggestion and one way that a lot of our impact grants come to us is an expansion of an existing project. So you don't always have to start brand new. You know, say your lodge has a promise grant project that provides school supplies to kids in need every August. You know, you could start thinking about, you know, how you can support those kids all year round. You know, maybe they need tutoring, maybe they need um, after school options, maybe they need help with sports teams and reading clubs and all sorts of things like that. You know, maybe they need meals over the weekend. You know, a lot of lodges hold backpack projects and things like that. So you know, think about your lodge's strengths already. You know, if you have this popular project and everybody pitches in once a year, you know, your lodge has a passion for that cause, you know, you might want to take advantage of that and expand that program. Um, and so when you're researching the project, don't overlook the potential for project partners. Partners can be really great 
for your project um, in terms of volunteers. They have a lot of experience. They're likely to have more community contacts. They might have access to resources that the lodge doesn't have. Um, project partners can be really great in helping your lodge start a project and start it off strong. One thing to mention is just make sure that you're honest um, when you're communicating with project partners. So Elks must always be an equal or greater partner in the project. Elks must always be in charge of the funds. So impact grants cannot be donated in any way. Um, your lodge needs to be in charge of the funds for the project at all times. Um, and as long as you're clear about that with project partners, everything should be great. So there's a great example here down at the bottom of a lodge in Colorado that had a successful impact grant project and they were talking about canvassing the community and, you know, learning about local needs and forming partnerships with a lot of different groups that served vets and that's how they were able to pinpoint issues that the veterans were having in the community. Of course, MPAC grant applications are online like all of our other grants. Um, lodge secretaries automatically have access to these grants through the CLMS system. Um, grant coordinators can access the impact grant applications on the impact grant pages. Um, so this is something we'd like your lodge to check out and look into now. Um, talk about the project at your lodge, decide who or you know how many people are going to help fill out the application. Establish that early and make sure those people are registered as grant coordinators so they can access the application. So impact grant applications take a lot of time. They're very time intensive, more so than our other grants. And you don't want to wait until the last minute and you don't want to run out of time maybe because the secretary is out of town. So make sure you designate someone early on who's going to be responsible for that application. Make sure they have access and that they start early. So now we'll talk about some of the most common issues that we see when we're reviewing impact grant applications. So one of the biggest problems we see with applications is, you know, maybe it's a great idea, maybe it's a real need, but there's not enough elk involvement for it to be an impact grant project. So when I say elk's involvement is one of the most important things we look for, um, I mean that it's worth the most points on the application. And if you go to the impact grant webpage, we have our scoring form right there. So you can look through and see, you know, how we're judging these application. You can also look on the actual application. When you start each section, it'll tell you how many points that's worth. Um, so make sure that when you're planning the project, it's predicated upon Elks involvement, meaning that the project would require volunteers from the Elks Lodge and would not be able to happen without the, that Elk involvement. Um, so another tip, maybe your, your lodge members are super involved. Um, make sure that you enter that onto the application. Be clear and detailed about that. You know, don't, don't just say, you know, everybody wants to help in every, in every way they can. That's fantastic. And that's a great way to start off that message about elk involvement. But, you know, if you could tell us how many people you expect to be involved, and obviously we, we, don't expect you to have an exact number, but you know you should make sure that you have people who are willing to dedicate themselves to helping out with this project, whether that's once a month or four times a year or you know an hour every week or something like that. So make sure you have a plan for that. You lay it out. You know you tell us how many volunteers you expect, and also what those volunteers will be doing. So this is very important. Make sure that everything about this is clear. Tell us everything there is to know about how your members will be involved. And as always, remember that grant funds cannot be donated. Um, and we say that just so you know that, you know, you wouldn't be able to partner with a local youth organization and write them a check and then in return, you know, volunteer at their activities once a month. So we're looking for more than that with an impact grant project. Um, another common misstep that we see on the impact grant application is not enough planning. So sometimes we read these applications and they start with a great identification of local need. 
you know, in a really unique and appropriate way to address that need. But beyond that, you know, there's not enough information there for us to make a judgment. So we receive a lot of applications um, and, you know, we can't, we can't make assumptions about your lodge as much as we would like to. So make sure you put all the details of the project down. Make sure you know exactly how often the activities will happen. You know, will they be once a week? Where will they take place? Um, what supplies are needed? How much do you think those supplies will cost? How many elks will be there to help? Um, you know, spend a lot of time on the budget. You know, convince us that your absolutely intention is to spend these funds well, that you've considered that and you've thought it out and you know you're going to be economical and spend people's time and money wisely. So make sure you lay out the whole plan so that if someone, you know, didn't know anything about their project and they read your application, they'd have a really strong idea about exactly what you were going to do. So make sure you start early. Um, don't be intimidated by the application, though. You know, when we talk about planning, you know, we're very much talking about practicality. Um, so we're not looking for, you know, complicated diagrams and spreadsheets. We want to make sure that you know exactly how the project is going and that, you know, you've considered how much funds you need and how you're going to spend that. So if you're asking for $10,000, you know, make sure that the budget accurately reflects what you're going to spend all those funds on and why those funds are necessary for this project. And one more note about the budget, you know, you don't always have to ask for $10,000. You know, we receive a lot of applications from lodges who, you know, start out with this great idea and they come out their plan and they figure out like, hey, we, we can run this project and we could run this project well this first year with $8,000, you know? So if that's the case, then, you know, request $8,000, you know, things like that can show us that you've really considered and thought about how, how much funds this project needs. And then the third misstep we see is unclear applications. Um, this is similar to the last one in that, you know, we wanna make sure that you've written out the the plan for the project and that, you know, you've done so in a way that is very clear to anyone who would read the application. Um, impact grant applications are competitive um, and they're final once they're submitted. So we can't call you with any questions. So, you know, if you're writing about, you know, your project, make sure you're clear about, you know, this is new, this has never been done before. You know, if you refer to maybe a portion of the project or an event that's happened in the past, you know, make sure that you're clear. Is this part of the new project? Is that part of the old project? Um, you know, we can't make any assumptions and we can't read your mind and, and we don't know your community. So, you know, if you're talking about local traditions, make sure you explain them to us so that we have a good idea of that. Um, and the way to get around this is have someone unfamiliar with the project proofread your application um, and read back to you what they think that you're going to do. And that can be a great way to, you know, see what parts you left out and where you can add more information. So we do recommend that, you know, you fill out the application once and then before you submit it, you know, step back, take some time and then go back to it and make sure that it's there, um, you know, because as we said, it is competitive and, you know, we need to be clear and sure of your plan and the funds and everything like that. So before you submit your impact grant application, please do call the ENF. Um, we love hearing from lodges and, you know, you can ask us anything you want. Um, we talk to a lot of lodges that hold successful projects all the time. So, you know, we, we have a great idea of what works and what doesn't work as people have shared their struggles and their successes with us. You know, so we might have, you know, a lot of insight about that. And maybe there's another lodge in another part of the country that, you know, holds a successful project that's similar to yours. And if that's the case, we can even put you in touch with the people who run that project currently and, you know, they can help you out and give you some advice. 
Um, you know, if you're toying between a couple ideas, feel free to call us and ask us our advice. Um, you know, the thing about impact grants is they require a lot of volunteer time. So, you know, there might be a great project that, you know, doesn't have a lot of opportunity for elk involvement. That's fantastic, you know, and might be perfect for a different grant, but maybe not appropriate for an impact grant. So we want to make sure you give us a call, you know, because the impact grant applications take a lot of time. So, you know, a quick phone call before you get everything started can really help your lodge focus and, you know, we can clearly express what it is that we're looking for. Um, for example, last week I got a call with a great idea about a project, but it was a, a one-time project. So it was a two-day project and that was it for the year. And so when I talked to that lodge, you know, I told them, you know, generally one-time projects for impact grants don't score that well because they're competing against projects that have a lot more involvement, you know, maybe on a quarterly or monthly or even weekly level from a lot of different elks. So, you know, we talked with that lodge and talked about, you know, possible ways to expand that project. You know, instead of holding one huge event for two days in the summer, you know, maybe they could focus on a smaller group of kids who needed more help and meet with them every month and their families and, and focus on that. And that's a great way to, you know, take the same idea and the same spirit and the same enthusiasm and turn it into a project that has a much stronger chance for impact grant funding. So, you know, ask for us, ask for our advice at every turn. Um, and if you are filling out the application, you know, as long as it's not submitted, we can go in and even look at parts of ap the application for you. So say you're having some trouble with the statement of need. You know, let us know and, and we can check it out. Or if you have questions about the budget, you know, feel free to call us when you're sitting in front of the computer and say, hey, I don't know what this means. Does this matter? You know, how should I write this down? Things like that. So um, like I said, we're happy to talk to you whenever we can. Um, one quick note is that applications are due September 4th. Um, the week before that is a very busy week in the ENF office. Um, so we're happy to help you at any time, but as that deadline gets closer and closer, you know, we're not able to provide the help that we were earlier in the year, like right now, July, or even August. So, you know, make sure you start planning early and call us with questions anytime. The earlier you call us, the more we can help you as you're, you know, you're planning it, the event, and talking to your lodge members and, and thinking about what works, you know, what your lodge's strengths are. So um, I hope I haven't intimidated you. Um, impact grant projects are, they're fantastic and they can be great for a lodge. And as I said, you know, with the application, you know, we're not looking for poetry. You know, we don't need a professional grant writer. We're just looking for a good practical plan from your lodge. Um, so we do have resources and tips online on our impact grant website listed here where you can look at the full guidelines. You can look at frequently asked questions. You know, we have a toolkit with all sorts of information. We have a scoring form. We have a PowerPoint presentation specifically about the impact grant application from a professional grant writer, um, as well as, you know, a list of action verbs that your lodge can use to communicate how your lodge is going to be actively involved in this project. Um, if you go to our impact grant pages, we also have videos about our current projects. We have a list of accomplishments that the 2014 impact grant lodges you know, had with their projects. So please do visit that website. There's so much there. So um, here is the contact information. I know I've said contact us. Um, here is how you do it. Call the main programs line. It's 773-755-4730. Or you can email us at lodgegrants at elks.org. Um, and make sure, once again, that application for the impact grant is online now. And it is due September 4th at noon central time. So I'm looking at the question box here, and it seems there are a couple questions. So one, somebody would like to know if they can submit attachments with their impact grant application. Um, great question. Um, unfortunately, you cannot. So when you're filling out the impact grant application, make sure all the information we need is on that application. 
You can't mail anything to us to attach. You can't email us anything. It all has to be explained and contained within that application. I have another question here about the dates for the impact grant. Um, the impact grant does run on the calendar year. So the applications that you'll be submitting by September 4th will be evaluated in the months of September and October. Um, impact grant recipients will be announced in late October. At that time, we'll work with lodges to get the paperwork we need, you know, set up any requirements. And the impact grant checks are mailed out to lodges in early December so that the lodges will have the money ready to go in their bank account and ready to spend on January 1st because the impact grants run on the calendar year. So that's January 1st, 2016 to December 31st, 2016. So in all of our publications and things like that, you might notice that we refer to these as our 2016 impact grants. And that's what we mean because they run exactly on the calendar year. Okay, great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, I hope to hear from you. I hope you guys are all excited about this possibility in your community. Um, you know, I've continued to be impressed with volunteer service and the dedication of all the impact grant projects that we funded in the past. So I hope a few more lodges will, will get involved and get excited about this opportunity. <laughs>